In the demo, we have two sites, Boston and Chicago. We have one database called DB. I know it's a very creative name. DB Boston is the primary database. And on the Chicago side, we have DB FRA 25C. The primary database is a rack database running on two nodes, Boston 1 and Boston 2. And the same applies for the standby database, Chicago 1 and Chicago 2. The database has just been upgraded to 1911 from 12102. And both of the Oracle homes are still present on all of the nodes. Before I did anything, I manually created a restore point on the standby database. And because I used auto upgrade to do the database upgrade, it created a guaranteed restore point for me automatically as part of the deploy process. But now we find out that there is an issue. We need to flash back the entire environment to the 12102 state before we did any changes at all. The first thing that I have to do is to stop redo transport and redo apply on the standby database. And then as a precaution, I shut down the standby database. I could leave them running, but I shut them down and keep them shut down just as a precaution until I have verified that the flashback operation succeeds on the primary database. I keep them offline just to be on the safe side. Then I switch to the primary database and I issue a flashback database. When that completes, I can restart the instance and, uh, and start them in the lower Oracle home and then open the database with reset locks. Now that I know that the flashback operation has succeeded on the primary database, I can then restart the standby database and then also do a flashback of that database. When it completes, I can restart the databases in the, in the old Oracle home, start them in mount mode, and then re-enable redo transport and redo apply in the standby database. So that's the overall procedure. Let's see how it works in a real demo. The first step is to stop the standby database, just to be on the safe side. I'm connected here to Boston 1, which is the primary database. I connect to DataGuard CLI and I use, use the show configuration command just to verify the DataGuard setup. Everything looks good. Then I connect to the database and I can use v$dataGuard config to see the same as well. Now I'm switching to Chicago 1, the standby side. And I connect to the standby database and I stop the data guard broker. Then I stop the entire database, all instances using SRV CTL. And just to be on the safe side, I disable the database as well so that no one by accident starts the database. Using SRV CTS status database, I can see that all instances of the standby database has been shut down. So now I can work on the primary database. I'm connected here to Boston 1 in the primary site. Also on the primary database, I shut down the data guard broker. Then because I've used auto upgrade for the upgrade, I can also use auto upgrade for the flashback operation. So I used the restore option and now auto upgrade will start to bring everything back to the 12102 state. After a while, the flashback and all, all the uh, auxiliary operations complete, the job has been restored. So let's connect to the database. And I can see from V$ instance that the database is now running 12102. The flashback has succeeded. So now it's time to flashback the standby database. So I'm connected here to Chicago 1, the standby site. I start the database in mount mode. And then I flash back the database to the restore point that I had manually created. Then I shut down the instance again.
And then I do a downgrade in GI. I tell Clusterware that the database should be started in the old Oracle home instead of the 19C home. I can then modify the database, tell Clusterware to start it as a physical standby in mount mode, re-enable the database, and then start the database, which will bring up both of the instances of the standby database. I use the status command to verify that both instances are running in the Chicago side. Now I need to recreate the data guard broker config because it doesn't survive a flashback operation. So I'm connected here to Chicago 1, the standby side. I restart the broker on the standby database. Then I switch to Boston 1, my primary site. And I start the broker in the primary database as well. Then I use DataGuard CLI. And I create a new configuration. DB Boston is my primary database. And I add the Chicago database as a standby database, a physical standby. And then I enable the configuration. Now the broker will start to bring everything in order and set the right parameters. I can verify from the show configuration command that everything looks good. But we can also do a show database on the individual PDBs on the Boston side, the primary database looks good. And the standby database in Chicago looks good as well. It's a physical standby, applies on, status X success. So now let's try to do a validate. It can tell me whether I can do a data guard switchover. And a switchover is actually a really good way of testing whether your data guard config is working as it should. So let's try to do a switchover now and see if it works. And after a while, the switchover succeeds. So I can now verify that the data guard has survived. Everything looks good. Let's connect to the database. Query VDollar instance, we are still on 12102. The database has been successfully flashed back and the data guard config looks good as well. So it actually wasn't that hard especially since I use auto upgrade to do all the flashback work for me. It's fully automated and supported using auto upgrade, just a restore uh, command, and it'll do all the work for you. So actually not that hard.